Have you ever wondered what's inside a Porsche hydraulic lifter or probably any hydraulic lifter? This is a hydraulic lifter from a 944. Uh, it would be similar to uh, a 928, a 944 8 valve. So the 928 was uh, about the same for its 16 valve and then a, a 4 valve for cylinder engine. So the, the 16 valve, 944, the 32 valve, 928, I imagine it would be a little smaller in diameter. So the point of the lifter is, is the camshaft lube pushes on this top flat surface and moves the lifter up and down. And then this little button on the inside, this pushes against the top of the valve stem. And I've got a valve right over here. So here's a valve, right? It's an intake valve, so that little button pushes right against the top of the valve stem. and Pushes it up and down. This little button, on most lifters, if you push it, it's a little, it's spring-loaded. You can feel it give a little bit. And there's a hole in the side of the lifter. High oil pressure, oil goes into this hole. Oil pressure from the oil pump um, creates oil on the back side of this button, and the pressure makes it so that the button doesn't really depress much. And the idea is, is when this is assembled, that button will push but the valve will push that button down a certain amount, about halfway, and it'll keep it there. And then the hydraulic pressure will, the oil will come into the back of that little piston, and it will, you know, support the back of that piston. So when the lifter moves, it, it moves the valve. Old time valves had to be adjusted with like feeler gauges and little set screws or shims to get the right clearance between the the, the tappet or the lifter and the and the valve. So, I cut one open to see what it looks like on the inside, and this is what I've got. So the, the main part of the, of the lifter is kind of a, a little bit of a bucket shape here. And it has a little, little piece on the top, so you can see the hole. So, right, so this is the main hole where the oil goes in. The oil fills up this cavity, and then from that cavity, there's another hole to this intersection. Now to create this cavity, there's an extra little piece of metal, a little round piece of metal, that is, is pressed into place. And there's actually a staking operation on the sides. So they, they actually put this piece of metal on and crimp it in. But before they even do that, there's actually a little rubber seal, a little piece of rubber and a little, um, a little metal retainer. This rubber seal is right around here, around the center stub, so that when the um, this little top plate, a little platform gets put in place, it creates a nice tight seal, so the oil pressure that's in this cavity doesn't doesn't leak out. The oil pressure in here is forced through this hole. So from that hole, there's a little piston. This little piston. I use this one because it has the, the plate still kind of pressed into place there. This little piston has a spring underneath it. This is that button, right? And the button that pushes against the, the valve stem so that this, you know, this, this moves up and down. So the piston has a little groove all the way around and another hole. So the oil is now coming through this hole into this groove and into this hole. When it comes through this hole in the little piston, there's actually a little spring-loaded ball. Right here is a spring-loaded ball that's a check valve. So this ball can go up and down. So when the oil comes through the hole, the oil comes into this passageway, the oil pushes against the ball and goes past the ball and fills the space above the piston, and that's what creates that hydraulic pressure. And then the ball, because of the spring, springs down to kind of lock it up. So when you try to push this button, the oil that's in front of this doesn't compress, and so it holds it in place. So a failed lifter is usually where either the oil isn't getting through these series of holes so that the oil can't get into this cavity or into this space, or this little check valve, this little ball, doesn't close properly, maybe there's some debris or something in there, 
and so the oil bleeds back out. So when you go to push this button in, it compresses all the way and that oil just bleeds right back out. And so then that oil that is in here, you know, a little bit of it will seep along the, um, the, the surface here of this piston and just out this gap. So as oil pressure is always being pumped in, a little bit of oil will seep out. So I imagine that the interface or the fit between the piston and this bore could, um, if the tolerances weren't right, too much oil would seep out there and you would have reduced pressure at the top of, of that piston as well.